Angels flying, wind <coughs> at her heels, circles <coughs> gliding, nothing revealed. <coughs> Too bad circles, I believe, I believe it's my beginning. Whoa, gone of those winters, gone of those days, gone of those choices to be recklessly brave. I'm guided by angels, decided by choice, it's my beginning. Guys, so back in Tanzania, as you'll be able to see. I'm really tired. Early morning, flew in uh, yesterday. I arrived, so feeling a bit shattered. But these guys are about to go up uh, Kilimanjaro, and they're doing that to raise money to build the new children's home, which is a special care unit uh, for the severely disabled children that we have and the babies as well. So it's uh, Johnny and Co. You met Johnny on the channel before uh, from last night at DJ Save My Life Foundation. And uh, here they are, the men themselves. Well, I'm the chairman, by the way. <laughs> this is the chairman of the charity, yeah, Russell. Thank you. So <laughs> just to get his name in. And uh, we're just sorting out their bags because they have uh, gone overweight with their snacks, it would seem. So. But also, while I'm here, I want you all to meet. A young man who you should recognise. Let me find him. Hold him. So, yes, this is Jackson. Jackson's working at this lodge. So, but you remember, uh, I about three years ago, I think, made a video where uh, we met Jackson, and he was uh, living out. He was sleeping on the street, weren't you, at the time? Yeah. Sleeping on the street, having a bit of a hard time. But now <laughs> uh, he's got a job because he got his qualifications and taught himself how to speak English as well. So. Clever guy, this one. Yes. So. It's a really good sign what you're seeing around my car because these are often at this stage with the rain we've had washed out and thankfully these are the fields that are a little bit higher up so they haven't washed out so we have huge maize this year uh, very huge some of it's like 10 12 foot tall the plants uh, and some flowers as well and driving past there you see so this is a huge blessing from god i can't possibly express how lucky we are because two years ago there was a lot of hunger a lot of malnutrition a lot of fatalities even due to that uh, just purely because uh, the fields had not survived due to the fact that the weather did what it did this year. Uh, next to me is these are peanuts, so uh, that looks good as well. And I'm just heading off to the forest because I want to see what's happened with the food forest that we're starting work on in September. Uh, because there's been so much rain, I want to know if the river's carved a new route through it, which it might very well have done because there was more rain than they've had in 50 years in the last six weeks here in Tanzania, whilst I was aware. So, yeah, I'm just driving through now the sunflower fields, but hold on a second, let's see if I can get this on my camera, guys. Hang on.
if you are into bird watching at all, when the sunflower fields are out, they attract countless birds of different varieties that I can't name. And you just saw one. I don't know what it was. I'll look it up later. It's just so stunning. So, I'm so happy to be home, guys. I really am. I miss my wife and I miss my son. But this is... Oh, I'm just so happy to be home. <laughs> Look at the size of this maze. I, look at this. It's massive. Some of it must be 12 foot tall. So, amazing. Good news. Good news. It means the families I know and love will have plenty to eat and we won't be panicking with a queue of people at the gate like we've had other years asking if we can share any of our maize or buy them some maize from uh, Kenya is what we had to do last time, so, okay. Right, I've got a bit of hefty off-roading to do in a second, so I better put my camera down while I do that. But nothing Toyota Land Cruiser can't handle. They just drive through anything, these cars. Oh, guys. I can hear the river. So, indeed, some of our permaculture plans for September might have changed because I think by the sounds of it, it might have carved a route through the land we were going to work on. Couldn't even hardly get the car down. There's so much life because there's been so much rain, which is a Beautiful thing, I've never seen so much life here actually, so much new plant life coming out of the dry ground. But at the same time, it's a, a difficult thing for other people, like I said, because it's washed out the, uh, the fields and the seeds. And already this here. That's hand dug irrigation. So they've diverted the river from further up across the long here. I know where they've dug that from as well. I know where they normally dig that from. So by hand, they've dug around about a two kilometer trench to direct the water up uh, off the river, which is ahead of us here, and then drop it back down onto the maize that they are growing further along this valley. And this is what I want to try and show here, is that you don't have to only grow maize. And because in only growing maize, people kill the monkeys, they kill the environment, they chop the trees down, because they get in the way. And uh, they don't get as much food as what they could if they implement a food forest. So when we implement our food forest, the first benefit will be for us, for the children, for ourselves. And the second benefit will be for the community who can copycat us. We'll need to subsidize them somehow because they can't just stop growing maize because then they don't eat. Uh, but if we can get them to stop growing it for four years and subsidize them for the food they lose out on and let them establish a food forest, then that'll work out well. The river is flowing quite well here. Fresh water, straight from Kilimanjaro, which is here. Oh, happy to be back. Oh, 
Mount Killy. All the guys are on their way up there now. I couldn't get to our food forest because uh, I'm a bit out of breath from being sick. Very easy for me to forget that I'm sick because I'm an idiot like that. So I'll try another day. Problem I've got now, there's been so much rain that I honestly, there's so much grass and plant life, I've lost the road. <laughs> and this sound, might sound like a foreign concept to you, but I've lost the road. So I know where I am, I know the area, but it just I don't know where the boulders and potholes are. Okay, this will be fun. I think I'll let you watch it just in case. <laughs> Right, we're good. <laughs> oh, you can't explain until you come here. Losing a road just doesn't happen in Europe. Here, I just lost the road in the dark. Beautiful night, heading home. Get some rest, spend some time with the boys. Uh, actually, Dominic and Fredrik, because they're off school. And uh, yeah, look at that sky, guys. Look at that sky. No, my wife will be watching and smiling because she knows how much I love here. But it doesn't mean I don't miss you, both of you. So, okay. Glad I'm in the car with these high fields leopard season not good so it's terribly bumpy here i've got a horrible feeling i've got a flat tire shit hold on a second speaking of leopard season let me check No, I don't, thankfully. So, but while I'm out, best of luck to our warriors on the mountain. They will be uh, here at the moment, and then they've got eight days to get to there. Hey guys, so long day today, but in among that day, this beautiful but scared, don't worry, little lady who I have called Sundance because uh, in North Dakota they're having a Sundance ceremony and uh, they are tying a black ribbon uh, for myself and the yellow ribbon for the children in our care. If you don't know what the Sundance is, I think I'll do a video on it soon. It's a very sacred and powerful ceremony. I found out about it last night, and then I find this little lady today. She literally walked out in front of my car, so God's put me straight back to work as soon as I got to Tanzania, so bless her. Hey guys, so, just 
at the new children's home, which is coming along uh, leaps and bounds. We are just establishing an extension to put on it. So we've got uh, exercise space for the children during the day and uh, somewhere nice and cool for them in the heat, but also not to make the mistake of having somewhere that's when it's rainy season too cold to use like we have now. So we're trying to work that out, which is quite tricky to do. And yeah, but it's looking really good. And I'm very, very happy that I take it around. Hold on. So this will be the special needs, uh, severely disabled uh, care and smaller children, babies ultimately. And then here uh, there will be another house, hopefully uh, we'll have the funds from the September Kilimanjaro climb or next year's June climb, which if you want to get involved with you can and yeah, be one of our warriors on the mountain as we're calling it. And then the idea was to put uh, good pathways everywhere, change all of this uh, to be mm, keep it as natural as possible, but make sure that we're capitalizing it on, on the land for food as well. And also have some pathways for the wheelchairs so the kids can go around uh, on the wheelchairs and see some of the environment a bit more because they're stuck inside too much, you know, and uh, that's really tricky. And what I really love to do is here, this behind our land is up for sale. And I would really love uh, when God uh, sees fit, I guess, or when we get the chance to, to be buying that and the land as well, uh, which will, because it comes with a few acres of land, which we can use for farming. So, but that's a big ask, it's like 70,000 US dollars, I think. But for now, progress and more children and a better quality of life for the children down here, of which we have many. I mean, you just need to look at our washing lines to understand how full we are here at the moment. So, and of course, our beautiful baobab tree shall remain here as long as it needs to. So. Hmm. Got my loyal pack with me. There's one thing about Tanzania, it's probably the safest place in the world for me. I've got 12 Maasai warriors and countless very protective dogs <laughs> so, no one can sneak up behind me here that's for sure so these are my my shadows shall we say and yes uh you might notice something here we had to cut down some trees and uh, i always have a ceremony and prayer for trees that i cut down that is how it should be that is the respect we should show to uh, uh, Mother Nature and the gift that is ultimately you. If you don't meditate, you won't know what I mean by that. You'll think I've just called you a bush. But you are a bush. Because you are one. You are one with its processes. So. Let's go and thrash out with these builders how we're going to do this. I'm a bit hungry and tired today. I can see myself in the camera. I'm looking a bit worn out. Rest time. <laughs> yes. Uh,